<clears throat> okay, hello. Uh, today we'll talk about this um, interesting architect, uh, Douglas uh, Douglas Cardinal. Uh, and let's uh, let's read a little bit about him. Uh, Douglas Joseph Cardinal uh, was born on March seventh, and today is March seventh, two thousand twenty-three. Is a Canadian architect based in Ottawa, Ontario. His flowing architecture, marked with smooth car curvilinear forms, is influenced by his Aboriginal heritage as well as European Expressionist architecture. His passion for unconventional forms and appreciation of nature and landscape were present, pre pre present in his life from a very young age and consequently developed into the unique architectural style he, he has employed throughout his career. Cardinal is perhaps best known for his designs of the Canadian Museum of History in Gatineau, Quebec, 1989, and the National Museum of the American Indian in Washington, DC. He is considered one of Canada's most influential contemporary indigenous architects. Uh, I, I actually find problematic this uh, form of putting it because I think he is one of the one of the best architects in Canada, regardless as he is in, indigenous or not. But you know uh, this kind of uh, rather discriminatory um, assessment uh, uh, can still be found in the media. Born in Calgary, Alberta, to parents Joseph and Francis Cardinal Douglas Cardinal is the oldest of eight children. His father was a Sikh Sika, Blackfoot, French and uh, Ojibwe heritage, while his mother was of German, French and Mohawk Metis descent, so Native American Indian. His mother worked as a nurse and was well-educated. Cardinal's parents met in 1926, and in the first half of the 20th century, women had very little status and rights. The patriarchal society did not recognize educated women like Francis Cardinal. However, his father's tribe's societal norms accepted a matrilineal culture where women are very respected and admired. Beautiful. These cultural ideas shaped Cardinal's upbringing and affected his worldview and relationship with his heritage. He has recalled that his mother told him at a young age, you are going to be an architect. Here, here, here he is. Douglas Cardinal. Born in 1934 and raised in Blackfoot territory, Douglas Cardinal's architectural studies took him to Austin, Texas, where he achieved his degree and was first exposed to the civil rights and indigenous rights movement. Douglas then became a forerunner of philosophies of sustainability, green buildings and ecologically designed community planning. His architecture springs from his observation of nature and its understanding that everything works seamlessly together. A very important word, together. Here he is dressed uh, as a Native American Indian. To be honest with you, is a much uh, nicer and interesting uh, way of dressing than with a black or gray suit and a burgundy tie, as the white man likes to dress. Now, it's, uh, this is uh, his uh, his wife. I think she's uh, of Spanish descent or from the Basque region of Spain, a screenwriter, a remarkable woman herself. So, uh, yes, she came from Basque, living in Ottawa in Canada. Uh, she was raised with strong uh, was called traditional values that included learning ancient Basque belief systems and contemporary Catholicism. Aidoya I, I, has a passion for understanding the source 
and ad adaptability of art and culture, which allows her to study the principles of such creative processes. Aidoya is working and living with her Anishinabe husband, the world famous architect Douglas Cardinal, and she also has been instrumental in the visioning, planning, and executing of many indigenous and cultural projects. This include the Canadian Museum of History in Canada, the National Museum of the American Indian in Washington, DC, the Cree Cultural Institute and Village of Uje Bugamu in Quebec, uh, Win Health Center in Sioux, Lookout, uh, Vanabo Aboriginal Center, Health Center, the Oneida Casino Hotel, too bad he built such a thing himself, the Discovery Park in Tennessee, the National Museum of Ethnicity in Beijing, and the Victoria Island Cultural Center in Ottawa. She's also the owner of Douglas Cardinal Housing Corporation, which is an enterprise that delivers beautiful solid wood manufactured homes. Furthering the values of the Etxea, the house, Aidoya continues her studies regarding the principles of matriarchy and the re-emergence of indigenous feminine power values in the 21st century. I also advocate matriarchy and I hope it will happen better sooner than later if we want the, the maddening war in uh, Ukraine to end. Some drawings of Douglas Cardinal. The spirit of creativity is in the center. project for a building. This was built. We are going to talk more in detail about this work. This building may, it might be that is, is, is his best building, as far as I know, from 1968. He was a young man at the time, at, at the time St. Mary's Church, built by someone with, uh, you know, indigenous uh, roots, uh, Native American roots, Native American Indian roots. Look at this. It's a church, but I think it's splendid. St. Mary's uh, Church, 1968, in Red Deer, Alberta, in Canada. Not bad, Mr. Cardinal, not bad at all. Indeed, this church is like a womb, like a maternal uterus. And maybe this is the appropriate uh, 
plan of a church or more than plan actually uh, the spatial uh, reality of the of, of, of the building In my opinion, is one of the most remarkable uh, churches uh, built in uh, in modernity. A school, nineteen seventy five, the same place, Red Deer, Alberta. Sixty years ago. Now you tell me if a, if a, if a student, a kid, a child studies in such a school, what kind of a person he might develop into, you know, it, it, it changes you, you know, the, this kind of architecture doesn't leave you indifferent as opposed to a flat uh, ceiling, white or gray. This is about togetherness, it's about people sharing a circular space, facing each other in a circle, you know, the, the hexagon of the tables. Douglas Cardinal. Alberta Government Services, Onoka, Alberta. A governmental building, maybe not so special, but even here he, you know, arrived at some fluidities. Uh, and uh, not everything is, in my opinion, beyond reproach. Like sometimes he uses certain levels of modernity that to me are a little bit problematic, like uh, the, some large surfaces of glass. I think he's very good with the masonry walls. But when he uses, like you see here on the right, you know, a curtain, uh, um, you know, uh, a glass uh, window, a very, you know, rather commercial cardinal residence, that's his own house. Unfortunately, I, I expected him to build a smaller, a more modest house, but, uh, you know, it's very rare to come across a modest architect. Uh, the only modest thing here is this picnic table or these two picnic tables in front of the building. But this, um, you know, slanted um, glass uh, ample surface, in my opinion, is problematic. And uh, I see certain manners here. I, I like the church, but when I see this, when I see his own house transformed into some kind of a, I mean, if you look at it, you'll say this is a, a you know, a, not a very big, but a public building. It's not a public building, it's his own house. And I think it's excessive that, uh, well, you know, if it had, and I imagine is, uh, I mean, there is a justification, maybe it is south and he's warming up the house with the sunlight, um, you know, but still somehow so much glass in a cold climate like, uh, like uh, you know, Canada has, um, 
I'm not sure it's so appropriate. Interesting, the flooring where you see he introduces the, the you know, the, the irregularities of, of land into the, into the inner space of the house. He even brings a, you know, a swimming pool there, which I think is rather eccentric and uh, I don't know. I mean, he seems to be a modest man, but this house to me doesn't show too much modesty, to be honest with you. Canadian Museum of History. It is located in Hall, Quebec, directly across the Ottawa River from Canada's parliament. A large building, so it's what can, uh, the Museum of History. These totems, uh, these poles, totemic poles of the uh, indigenous uh, Native American Indians in Canada are, are formidable. I still think there is a side of his work which makes me a little bit uneasy. This, uh, uh, some kind of, a, I don't know, officialness, or I don't know how to call it, a certain mundanity. There is even a certain, you know, commercialism somehow, which disturbs me a little, but um, anyway, it's important, I think, to, to know of him as well. The Civic Center, USA, 2004. He was a consultant for this architecture firm, CH2 Architecture. Not the most common um, city, city civic center. That was all. Uh, it ended rather abruptly, and I apologize, but that was um, the presentation on uh, on on Douglas uh, on Douglas uh, Cardinal.